Hello there, it's me, Sari, here again, and today I thought I'd take you on a journey when I'm making a tag or a card a little bit looking like this. It might not be exactly the same, but I thought I'd give you a couple of hints and tips of what to think about. So, first off, I got myself a paper bag here that I have just slit open and then folded it backwards in that case and I can actually protect my working surface because otherwise I'll have all my stuff covered with ink and I'm not really that fond of that and at the bottom I have actually put a piece of paper that I have started colouring with both sprays and different kinds of colours and uh, the reason for me putting that one there is that I mean there's a lot of ink going to waste otherwise so I thought I'd just try to sort of get my hands on that ink and see where I can use it for a later another project perhaps. I haven't really prepared myself for this project through and through 100% but I thought I'd give you a couple of hints as I told you before. So the first thing I'll go, I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a little bit of spraying and uh, I think I'll start with some of my homemade sprays with the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Inks. Let's see if I can just find them. I, I think I have I had some uh, honey the wild honey, so I think I'll just put that at the top. Can you see me if I do it like this? You might see me. I could actually lower it down a little bit, but then you don't want to me. I'm going to be here now. So I'm just going to go put some something in a dia the, the diagonal corners there. And then I'm going to go for some really strong pink. I think it might have been this one actually, pink raspberry. And I'm going to just put it diagonally all over the paper. And as you can see, I'm spraying quite heavily. And then I'm going to go for some, uh, perhaps a little bit stronger orange, just to give it some definition there. And why not end things off with some yellow? I think that the mustard seed really picks out the colours and gives this uh, tag piece a really vibrant look. I'm going to put in a little bit more pig raspberry there. It won't be the same as the other one, but that's the way things are, I suppose. So I'm not going to dry this. So. I'm going to start off with this stencil. This one comes from Prima and it's a, some, some, some sort of a cogwheel thingy here. So I think I'll just start by spraying at the corner here. Try to make use of those cogwheels and I'm hoping that paper will help me out. And since I saw that this paper was going to be a bit warped, I think I'll just keep it in my hand like this so I have more control over where the colour is going to end up. So now I get this result and this is alright I think, it isn't too dark. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one because I told you that I'm going to work on this two at once. So I'm just going to do some spraying and you know, the good thing about having a piece of paper like this, you can actually just stamp off the excess ink there. Or, depending on what kind of ink you're using, I could go for some kind of a stamp cleaner. This is just some regular stamp cleaner here. And then I'm just going to wipe it off with a, what we call here in Sweden, a miracle rag. So, and I'm going to put that one back and I'm storing my stamps in something that is called a stuff tainer and these come in three different heights or depths so to speak. Now I'm going to use a, a 
postmark stamp and I'm just going to stamp it or just put the ink I'm just going to ink it where that um, stamp round stamp thing is and I'm doing it in a different color because I just want something different for the eye to look at really and I've sort of learned to want to work in twos so I just want to make that one pop up twice I'm not sure why I just think I like it so I'm building myself a collage if you will like so and I'm just going to stamp it off that is absolutely fine by me so just going to put that one there and then I see that I've also got a wonderful splash or splotch stamp there and this time I'm going to go for some saffron and you might think that hey that's not going to show perhaps you're right and perhaps that's enough and as you can see I have used something saffrony up here and that's just the small inclination of something being there that sort of attracts me so you see it is actually visible a little bit because if I were to stamp all of these stamps with the same hue that is black I mean you would just not see these things that's nicely as when you do now now would you so I'm going to repeat the same thing I mean this is a nice way if you're going to make a couple of cards that are going to be sort of similar why not make them simultaneously and I'm going to do the stamping off as well So now I think I can take that one away. I did have some more. Actually, I did have that brick wall. That is a stamp that I actually absolutely love. This brick wall stamp from Tim Holtz. I wish I had the bigger one as well. And now I'm going to use a red colour, which is called Crimson, when it comes to these wonderful inks from Archival Ink. These are also waterproof. So that is good to actually mix them with the distress inks and sprays and such. I'm just going to put that one there. And then red one, the red colour is going to break off really nicely against that um, green, I think. And since that one is pretty high up, I might actually... Well, I'm going to put that there. Because now I'm going to twist it. Actually, just put it like so, just for the hell of it, you know. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm thinking perhaps I should do that in blue, but I'm not going to wander from my original thought because I'm going to incorporate some blue blueness to this later. So I think I'll just stick to my plan. I'm going to tell you why I thought of using a different color because I was before I stamped I was afraid of this not showing but it does show now doesn't it so you needn't be afraid of things not showing because then you might get even more depth to your project so now we are here and I could also do that um, stain splotch thingy there and this time I'm using vintage photo and I'm just going to do a test splotch so to speak you know I love this and the drawback of course is getting myself really inked up and soaked up and such but I love the way it splatches there so a tip is that you could actually just wet the paper a little bit and then just do that splatting so you get a double splat or you could try and hope that it'll succeed at the first go and I, you see I actually managed to do both of them you might think that the brown one is taking over, but if you compare it to this one, you see that having had some acrylic paint or something there is going to soften it up a little. So now it's time to use a stencil actually, because then I can do what I was talking about earlier. This is the reverse 
chicken wire stencil and this one comes from crafters workshop just going to put it there and I'm going to take something blue and you see that when I combine blue and pink it sort of turns into purple so I'm going to go for the salty ocean from Tim Holtz and these are my handmade sprays as you might remember just going to give it a spray like so and I'm going to be happy with that and the best thing about actually having a template or stencil that covers your page is that you won't get those sharp edges from that stencil because I think that is pretty ugly unless you're looking going for that look and you're going to be able to cover things up what I mean with those sharp edges is this effect here I don't want that on my project so that's why I usually tend to put some extra paper on the template before I put it on my project and then spray because I don't want those sharp edges there and now since I told you I'm going to do something with one of these and I'm thinking perhaps this could be a nice substitute for this because I like the greenness up there so perhaps I'll just go wild with this one then I'm going to bring out my cutter bag. Oh no, sorry, big shots. And I'm going to do a bit of dry embossing on this just to see where it will end up. So I've put, taken out some of my texture fades here. These are from Tim Holtz. I'm thinking this one could be nice even though actually i'm going to go for this bubble wrap or what it's called it sort of looks like bubble wrap and since this paper is or this texture fade is made into an a2 size i suppose my paper is also an a2 size so i'm just going to run it through i have taken away the tab one and two so i'm just going to run this on the base with the two cutting plates And since I'm lacking space here, I'm just taking these off properly. And I'm just going to put that one away. So now we've got this. You can actually see it better than I can. And what I need to do now to enhance this... Well, my point was actually just to... I wanted to see how much of these dry embossed effect will I see on this and I'm not going to uh, cover all of these raised spots this is the debossed side I'm just going to continue with the texture paste because now I'm going to do something this is something that I have shifted from a jar to this one acrylic molding paste modeling paste actually and I'm going to use something here. I'm just going to need to take my a spatula or knife something. This is pretty thick, heavy that stuff it is this. So I'm going to start by putting it if I'm going to go and put it white, I'm just thinking now because if I'm I would like to keep it down here as I did with the other one because the aeroplane is going to be white then, black and white so I don't want to make that one disappear into this white stuff so I'm just going to make myself a half moon down here and I'm just going to spray this one all over it it doesn't have to be perfect either just as long as you have something there and I'm just going to lift it like so and you see it's going to make a beautiful textured thingy there and when I'm going to do some uh, heat setting or yeah I'm just, just going to heat it or dry it with my embossing gun I'm hoping for a, a proper relief effect there an embossed effect that is that is so now you see that I got some white there but I'm not going to be bothered about that because I think that I can cover it up with the aeroplane later
So when I compare these two, I see that the other stuff that I used before is giving me a nicer structured effect, whilst this one is keeping itself pretty flat. Although it does look pretty good in the camera, doesn't it? So perhaps I ought to be pleased with that. And well, I hope it's dry. And what I'm going to do now is actually continue this journey with the acrylic paint. And as I did use something turquoise before, I might actually continue with it. And then I'm going to dry that with a heat gun. And the same thing goes for the acrylic paint. Of course, I'm going to make use of it in another project. And as I can see, I need to move that one. So, I'm a bit sad that I haven't got any more pages ready here because I can't really get use of this. Just going to first, I didn't have any more paint now, did I? So, perhaps, I, yeah, you see, this is nice. I like the reversed effect of that stencil. I really like that effect. Let's see if I can get any more from this one. And as you saw on this one before, I just left the colour paint there because it dried too quickly. I didn't have the chance to clean it. So as for this spatula, I just want to give it a wipe, like so. You could of course go with some baby wipes as well to try to actually clean these up I remember right now. So now I have used that turquoise on that. I think I'll just go for another colour on this one then. Let's see, now I've got pretty much quite a strong palette here. I want to cool things down and I'm thinking perhaps I could f try a different... I think I'll go for some green then. Let's see what this one is. This is uh, something that's called Art, art Collection. Uh, this is something I bought in a grocery store, really. As I need that stencil as well, as well. And I'm just going to put it like so and sort of follow the trace of that green or that blue paint there. Just to wipe it clean. So now I'm going to do some heat embossing yet once more. Or just drying. see I use different acrylic paints and the result is also different this one just really bubbled and flattened out quickly and I think that is due to the fact that I used that blue heat gun whilst this one didn't really do the trick as it did on this one the first one so you see you can't really expect the same result at every time I just hope this video it hasn't been out of frame all the time So I'm using my blending tool and I'm keeping it a little bit tilted upwards. So in that case I'm just using the diagonal piece of that blending tool. And I'm just going to work myself around this paper. And to finish things off I'm going to use the same ink pad and I'm just going to drag it around the edges like this because I like it when it gives that rough hard edge like so and made myself a mixture of antique linen in a mini mister bottle so I thought I'd just spray it like so just to see what happens 
and if I want to I could of course just take off the excess paint or ink so it won't be that dark so I think I'll just glue it down like so and this this one is on the rising so I'm going to keep it a little bit tilted like that I'm going to fasten it with my glue gun I hope it has melted enough so I can actually get it to stick wanted to get stuck there I suppose and then when it comes to using these I think I go for the one that I sprayed with the antique linen and I'm going to cut it because if I were to put it like this I would cover up too much of the background so I'm actually going to fussy cut it and then of course I could put on even more ink because I want this one to pop out from the background so now I'm really working it at them, roughly. I'm going to glue these. You know, I actually like these being a little bit crinkled, uh, crinkled up. So that was a nice gesture, a nice feature, I think. So I'm going to try to glue these down like as they are. A bit crinkled up. Jo journey, the enjoy, my goodness. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. I had it like that before. I think I'll just go with this. You know, this is what this was a nice effect, I think. Just keep them crinkled up like as they are. I see that the glue is giving me a hard time. I hope I can just force it out. Enjoy the journey, you know. So I think that I'll have to do. Enjoy the journey. Go where you are. I could of course continue with something up there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be satisfied with it as, as, as it is. I could of course go in. And if I want something more brown, I could just tilt this ink pad even more. So you see, I get a nice brown corner there. It's time for me to sign off. I wish you all the best. Bye bye.